today together. As we take it up higher, it's a great celebrate today. We're honoring the man this morning. So we're going to high praise it. And some of us are blessed with some men. They got some, they ain't got no six pack and talents, but they got some leaders. And I love my leader pack man. Hallelujah. But you have to have a life. You got to have a life.
our great God ahead, grab a break. Come on, celebrate. Celebrate our great God. Hallelujah. Now listen, grab a hand, look at me, but we know what I'm talking about. far and wide, but we've discovered that there's none like you, and so we've come to worship you, we've come to celebrate you, we've come to lift you up, we realize that our blessing is in our praise, that our deliverance is in our praise, and, and our praise is in our mouth, we've got to open up our mouth and release it into the atmosphere of God. That it may set the temperature of what you want to do in the room. So God, we come thanking you. We know that there's none like you and we're nothing without you. So humbly we approach your throne of grace, asking that you might have your way. In the name of Jesus, amen. Amen. Grab your Bibles and turn to 1 Samuel. 1 Samuel chapter 16. 1 Samuel chapter 16. Take a moment to greet everybody and say welcome this morning to Faith Fellowship. I am so excited about God. I invite you to come and grow with us. Amen. See what God has in store. First Samuel, first Samuel, chapter 16. Verse 13 verses and then verse 18 and 19. I'll be reading from the New International Version in NIV. Uh, but in your hearing, you'll find words that are very similar to these. And it simply says, The Lord said to Samuel, How long will you mourn for Saul since I've rejected him as king over Israel? Fill your horn with oil and be on your way. I'm sending you to Jesse of Bethlehem. I've chosen one of his sons to be king. But Samuel said, listen, how can I go to Saul? Because if he hears about it, he'll kill me. The Lord said, take a heifer with you and say, I've come to sacrifice to the Lord. Invite Jesse to the sacrifice. And I'll show you what to do. You to anoint for me the one I indicate. So Samuel did what the Lord said when he arrived at Bethlehem. The elders of the town trembled when they met him. They asked, listen, man, did you come in to start some stuff? Do you come in peace? Samuel replied, listen, yes, I come in peace. He said, I've come to sacrifice to the Lord. So here's what you ought to do. Consecrate yourselves and come to the sacrifice with me. Then he consecrated Jesse and his sons and invited them to the sacrifice. When they arrived, Samuel saw Eliab and thought, man, look at this dude right here. Surely the Lord's anointed stands here before the Lord. This has got to be the one he's choosing. But the Lord said to Samuel, do not consider his appearance or his height. He says, but I have rejected him. The Lord does not look at the things that people look at. The Lord looks at the, the people look at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. And then Jesse called Abinadab and said, surely this is him in my second oldest. He's, he's a good looking man. And he, he had to pass in front of Samuel, but Samuel said, the Lord has not chosen this one. Mm -hmm. Then Jesse had Shammah pass by, the, but Samuel said, nor has the Lord chosen this one? Jesse had seven, seven of his sons pass before Samuel. But Samuel said to him, the Lord has not chosen these. Mm -hmm. Well, he said, well, well, no, wait a minute. Now, I didn't give you the best of what I got. And so, but he asked Jesse, listen, man, he said, is this it? Yeah. Are these all your sons? Right. He said, because I, I know I heard God say to me specifically, that one of your sons, this ain't in a mad living. 
Some of y'all would be like, what version is that? I mean, I got to get that version. They said, listen, I heard God say to me that your son, one of your sons was supposed to be king. Seven of them have passed and none of them have been chosen. So again, he asked Jesse, he said, are these all the sons you have? He said, oh man, I, you know, I got this young fella out there in the field. I mean, you know, he's just, he watching the sheep while I brought my, my military sons in. I wanted you to see them. And he said, he said, well, man, sit for him. He said, in fact, nobody is going to even sit down until he arrives. So he sent for him and had him brought in. He was glowing, glowing with health. And he had a fine appearance and handsome features. Then the Lord said, listen, rise and anoint him. Why? This is the one. This is the one. So Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the presence of his brothers who were not chosen, by the way. And from that day on, the Spirit of the Lord came powerfully upon David. Samuel went back to his headquarters in Ramah. Verse 18 says, one of the servants uh, uh, answered, I've seen a son of Jesse of Bethlehem who knows how to play the lyre. He is a brave man and a warrior. He speaks well and is fine, a fine looking man and the Lord is with him. Not one sister said amen right there. <laughs> then Saul sent messengers to Jesse and said, send me your son David who is with the sheep. Mm -hmm. For just a few moments, the process of kingship. Right. The process of kingship. You may be seated. This, this, this month, all month, all of last month, we celebrated, encouraged, and empowered our women yeah, 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 yeah. with messages that were uh, centered and catered to uh, making sure that we honored our women, especially in the month of Mother's Day and uh, when mothers around the globe, uh, in particular here, but around the globe, were celebrated. And this month, we're celebrating our men. This month, we are uh, I believe that every sermon, you, everybody will get something from every sermon. But we are going to lift up and encourage uh, our men. And today, I want to talk about the process of kingship. There's something interesting about kingships. One of the things... Uh, brothers, that we first I want us to understand is that every last one of us is a king. Uh -huh. Amen. But we didn't wake up king. Uh -huh. You don't just wake up and declare that you're the king. Right. There is a process to kingship. Kings have to go through a process before uh, they are anointed to be king. It doesn't mean that you're not called to be king. It doesn't mean that you're not even anointed to be it. You just didn't wake up and decide to be king. What happens is there's a process. There's, there's something very transformational that takes place on the inside so that our kingship can show forth on the outside. Right. And in fact, here's a, I want to make just a few quick points. The first thing I want to deal with is the fact that we were destined to be king even though we didn't know it. I'm just going to walk the scripture this morning if that's all right. Right there in, in verse 1 of chapter 16, it says, The Lord said to Samuel, how long are you going to mourn for Saul? He said, now I've already rejected Saul. Y'all still crying over him like y'all still want him. Now, if, if I had left him king, now let me tell you, he said, y'all want a man who was not honest. Right. He said, you, you're crying over a man who was bringing a curse on you. He said, in fact, so much so, God has rejected him. He said, because when I, I gave Saul this responsibility, I told him to destroy everything. But Saul, in his disobedience, he, could, he allowed the money and the power to get to him so much so that he walked in disobedience in spite of what I told him to do. He said, I told him to destroy everything, but he kept the good stuff. Yeah, and then when he saw a lame cow and a skinny cow and a and a and a, uh, a, a sheep that wasn't as full of, of fur as the as the other sheep, or a camel that wasn't as strong as he killed all of them. He ki he killed all of the weak things, but the strong things he kept for himself. Now, when he was called on a carpet about it, he lied and said, "Well, I was going to keep it because I was going to sacrifice it for you, God." And that's when God came back. The Lord came back and said, "Well, listen, it was it would be better for you to be obedient." Than the sacrifice. It's better for you to do what I said do. Do it my way than you think that 
you have a better way to do it. He said, I told you, I gave you instructions on how to do it. And so because you are disobedient, Saul, I have rejected you. And so Samuel had to dis to, to dis, uh, dismiss him from his responsibilities. But now here's the thing in chapter 16, because now in chapter 16, he's saying, I've got to go to Jesse. Well, Jesse is where Saul is. He says, now if Saul gets word that I'm coming to, to anoint his replacement, he going to kill me. And so here the Lord said, Lord said, listen, I want you to still go. He said, but take a heifer with you. And this time, for real, I want you to take a heifer and let them know that you're taking this cow, this heifer, to be sacrificed. Wow. And in fact, so do it so much so that you even invite Jesse and his sons to be a part of your ceremony. Wow. And so he was destined to be king. And now here's the problem is, the problem is you can't tell that David was going to be destined to be king. Because you can't tell by how they treated David. Look at how they address David. Uh, we'll, we'll get to it, but David, they said, hey, oh, he's out there watching the sheep, depending on your version, tending the sheep. In other words, uh, they didn't even give him the honor of being called a shepherd. Let me try it again. He, they just said, oh, that little fella out there, he's just watch, watching the sheep. They did not even honor him, at least with the title of being a shepherd. You couldn't tell by how they treated him. Yeah. Um, in fact, when the other sons are going to be invited, they didn't invite David. Right. And, I mean, I'm sure David had to watch his brothers get dressed up. After all, they weren't military men, so they had rank. They had they came in dressed in their garb. They had their uniforms on. They were tall, handsome, strong men, and they came in, and they came. And so he had to watch them go while he had to stay and watch their sheep. So you, he was destined to be king, but you couldn't tell by how they would treat him. But then watch this. There's part of another part of kingship. You got to be sure that you even want to be king. Ah, come in, church. Uh, because kingship is dangerous. Let me, let, me, let me try it again. Because see, a lot of people want to be king, but, be, but kingship comes with some heavy responsibility. When you start talking about you, you're going to be the king, kingship is can be dangerous. There's sometimes where where being king will take you out. I'm, I'm right here. I'm still right here in the text because uh, there is a sacrifice to be made. Here's what he said. He said, "Take a heifer with you, because if, if the only way that you're going to make it is you got to come in peace. But the second thing you have to understand is everybody doesn't want to see you be king. You get ready to go into a place where sometimes you being king is a threat to another king." I wish I had somebody. But if you if you are if we're honest with ourselves, there's enough room for you to be king and you to be queen and you to be queen and you to be king and you to be queen and you to be queen and you to be queen and you to be king. There's enough room for everybody to be kings and queens over the domain that God has assigned you. And nobody and I don't have to be big and or small for you to be big. We can be big together, but there's some people in their minds in order for them to be big, you gotta be small. And so, so sometimes being king can be dangerous, and that's what he's trying to say. You get ready to go into hostile territory, so make sure this is what you really want. Make sure, make sure you really want to be king because kingship comes with a certain level of responsibility. And he says, listen, um, if you're going to be king, kings must know how to follow instructions before they start giving instructions. I'm in verse 3, I'm just walking the text. Because look, look at verse 3. Uh, it says, uh, Invite Jesse to the sacrifice, and I'll show you what to do. Watch this. You are to anoint for me the one I indicate. Wow. He's very specific about his instructions. He said, Listen, he, he, you got to understand, that just, you go and you just go. I'm going to show you the one uh -huh. that I want you to anoint. Right, right. Now, now, why is this significant? Because he's going into a place where the king has been rejected. Uh -huh. They still want the rejected king. Mm -hmm. And so when Samuel is coming to tell them to go into to share with them that he's got he's gonna anoint another king, he's going into a place where they don't want to see him. Yeah. Yeah. And so the king has got to go into some unpopular places, yeah. uh, deal with some unpopular people. Watch this. He's gotta be a blessing to them. Even though they don't want it. Yeah. Yeah. Come on. Come on. See, see, this is why you gotta make sure you really 
want to be king and go through the process of anointing king because what happens is sometimes you're called to do things uh, that you don't want to do. Yeah. 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 I, I, I pastor this church. I, I love pastoring. Now, it, is, it is what I do as well. I'll celebrate 25 years next month. I'm amazed. I love it. But watch this. But there are times, Earl, there are times, uh, Reverend Hill, when, when I want to respond a certain type of way. I, I know y'all want to believe y'all pastor always just, you know, I walk on clouds with angels. <laughs> and sometimes I do, but, but sometimes I feel like cussing people out. Come on, come on, come on. Don't, don't turn my mic off, South man. Listen, so, 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 sometimes... Some, I, I'm not. I, I'm not a big cussler. I, I, I'm not. That's not. I, I mean, I, I have, but I, it's not what I do. But sometimes I feel like some people need it. Are <laughs> looking at me strange? I, I didn't say I do cuss or not, and, and and most of you will go the rest of our lives together, and you will never hear me say a cuss word. But but sometimes, church. So so. I'm a lover, not a fighter. I am. You better say it. But sometimes I feel like I'm raising these Jordans. Yeah. Unbutton two or three of these buttons. Come on, come on, come on. For real. But because of my calling. My, my, my. sacrifice this heifer I'm going to sacrifice I'm going to do a ceremony so listen in fact man why don't you come and bring us on to the ceremony why don't you come and and so the bible says the scripture says and he sanctified them for the ceremony mm -hmm. what 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 does that mean what 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 is that process because what in other words you can't just walk up on God all willy nilly yeah. all right. All right. All right, guys. You, 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 you've got to, there, there is a preparation process uh, that you've got to go through. Uh, there's a cleaning process. And see, the reason why we miss this is, is because we come to church however we feel. Yeah. Come as you are. We come in here high, high drunk, sleepy, yeah. on stuff. Yeah, yeah. Just on, got out of the bed with somebody else that, you know. Come on. We came because mama going to call and say, did you go to church? Yes, ma'am, I did. <laughs> and you should come to church. Yeah, you should. I'm not even telling you that you should. I'm saying we have not gone, we have not learned what the consecration process is. So that's, that's my point. I'm not telling you, however you come, you ought to come. Because yeah. if there's ever a place and a time where you God can deal with you in whatever condition you come in, it is the house of God. Uh -huh. So so please come. But the thing is, sometimes when we want and need something from God, sometimes you gotta consecrate yourself. Come on, come on, come on. And sometimes that comes for us in the time of fasting and prayer. Yeah. Where we where we set aside time to spend time with God in order that God might give us something that we cannot get in our busy lives. Uh, that is the purpose of fasting. is a time where you can have an encounter with God that you cannot have without stopping, sacrificing something, giving God time and room to speak in your life. Uh, That's why even in Scripture it says some things, he said, I know you want some kind of power, and I know you want these things, he said, but some of that only comes from fasting and praying. Uh -huh. In other words, you can't get it just doing life and business as usual. Sometimes you gotta stop if you want to get something special. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Oh, and so, and so, and so he says you gotta prepare. Now, there are several things. He says, I want you to clean yourself up. There are several things in scripture. Leviticus reminds us 
of several things that will help, that, that will get you dirty. Mm -hmm. uh, one, he said food, for the little verse, chapter 11. He said there's certain foods you can eat. Uh, he said if you have a, just had a child, childbirth, chapter 12, uh, we'll talk about that. Disease, obviously, Leviticus is 13 and 14 talks about various diseases that will make you unclean. Numbers, uh, chapter 19, touching a dead person, uh, handling the dead will make you unclean. He says, this is, I'm not telling you, he said, you got, you got to do all those things. You got to eat. You know? He said, but sometimes you got to stop. And go through a purifying process. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's, it's like somebody who's been addicted to something. There's a detox. Yeah. Sometimes you got to get some stuff out your spirit yeah. before you come and get his, into his presence. Yeah. Now, now listen, I didn't say that that's what you had to do before you came to church. Because yeah. people come to church all the time, but Paul, and they ain't in his presence. Yeah. You're right. You're right. Yeah. You're right. You're right. All right. Sometimes you got to hit that mic to make sure it's still on. Uh, we hear you. And it's important to come before God with a pure heart. Look at verses 6 and 7. Listen, don't, don't be mad, kings. Listen, kings, don't be mad when, when somebody else is called king before you. Uh -huh. Try again. Uh, don't, don't, don't be mad that somebody else looks more kingly than you do. Right. I'm in the text. It says, when they arrived, Samuel saw Eliab. And Eliab was a military man. He was tall. He was handsome. And because Saul was a tall and handsome king, it speaks about that description. He was a tall and handsome man. And so uh, because of that, when, when he saw Eliab, he thought, surely, he said, oh, look how handsome this boy is. Uh -huh. He's tall. He's strong. Look at him. Ooh, this must be the one that God, because he was feeling like if, if, if Saul was it, he felt like there must be a similarity. In other words, the king had a type. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And he said, this, surely this, this, this handsome young man uh, is, but understand something, nobody can rule over the domain that God has called you to rule over. Right, right, right. And, and immediately he said, this is not the one. Uh -huh. He said, I oh, I don't know how this handsome young king, and let me pause it for that, because you know what happens? Too many people are looking for a tall, dark, and handsome king. Too, too, too many times, but they're looking for these tall, dark, handsome kings. You gotta upgrade the short, sexy, and sophisticated. Upgrade yourself, think out of the box. God is rejecting these tall and handsome. Yeah. It is not of God to be tall. No, I'm just playing. I'm just playing. That's too much. That's too much. You out of style, brother. You out of style. She, like, she said, no, he ain't. No, he ain't. So, so I'm understanding. He rejected. He rejected. He rejected this king, he said, he, and so surely he said, listen, we'll bring the next son. And so when his next son came, he said, oh, oh, look at him. Uh -huh. He said, man, surely this, this, this is the son that I know it. Uh, and, 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 so, and so what happens is, he said something, he said, man, hold on. He said, I see what you're saying. He said, you're, you're, you're saying that because he looks like a king, uh -huh. he must be king. But, but watch, he says, but kings are not judged by their facial features and their height. They're judged by what Dr. King called the, the content of their character. Uh -huh. and they're judged by their heart. He said, kingship is not a physical feature. It is about it. It is an internal issue. In other words, you are not king because of what you look like. You are king because of who you are. Uh -huh. You're not king because you look like one. You're king because you're anointed to be king. Uh -huh. It is not a physical feature. It, it, it is not. It is, it is something that is internal. And let me tell you something. Last week when we talked about how they, they, we look like grasshoppers in their eyes. It is, it is, and there is something about a brother mm -hmm. who has low self-esteem. Because what happens is when you have low self-esteem, you can't see the king in you. When, when, when you have, when you don't see yourself as a king because you don't think you look like a king, uh, you, there is something that drains and stresses your mental capacity to like what you see when you look in the mirror. Come on, come on, sir. 
For many years, I would take my kids on historically black college tours. Mm -hmm. Probably do one in maybe two, three years. But uh, we'll, we'll, we, I like to take them on historically black colleges, universities. Ain't nothing wrong with any other university. But you know why I take them to our schools? Because when I because I want them to walk on the campus, mm -hmm. and I want them to see the bald head guy. Mm -hmm. I want them to see the guy with a nice fade, tall, dark, handsome guy. I want them to see the young lady with the twist. I want them to see the young man with the mohawk. I want them to see this. I was, I was, I was lost for words. I didn't know. I want, I want them to see the young lady with a with her updo. I, I wanted to see the short hair, blonde hair. I wanted to see the dude with dreads. I wanted to see the dude walking around campus with his bow tie and his pants like all the way up, like just showing his shoes. I want to see. I want to see the dude with his shorts that's hanging a little bit low. You know why that's important? Because whatever they see, they can see themselves there. <laughs> And, 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 and brothers, when the reason why it's important that you like what you see when you look in the mirror, I ain't talking about, oh, I feel like I need to lose 10 pounds. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about your internal. I'm talking about your heart. I'm talking about that you love that guy with or without his weight. I mean, the reason why that is so important is because we're kings. And if you don't believe you're a king, people won't treat you like the king that you are. And it's nothing worse than an insecure man who has that Napoleon complex who now he was belittled everybody around him because internally he feels broken. Come on. Yeah. Come on. Come on. So now ain't nobody else nothing. Because you feel like you ain't nothing. And so now you'll bring your wife or your girlfriends and every relationship and your family members and your friends. Now, now they got to come down. Because you, you because you're down. Because you're captured by little. Yeah. Wow. Sometimes a brother want to be king. But little got him. My God. Come on. And so, my brother, you got to know that you're a king. And verse 8, verse 8, he went on, he called some other kings. You got to understand that sometimes, sometimes you ain't, your name ain't going to be named. Uh -huh. right. 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 Come on, come on, come on. Man. But a king is okay with his name not being next. Amen. Amen. Let me, yeah. let me, let me, let, let me, let me try it again. Yeah. Because see, in verse eight says that just to call the down had it passed. The Samuel said, "The Lord has not chosen him, uh, him either." We can go to uh, verse nine as well. He says, "Jesse then said, Shah has shall passed by, but Samuel said, Nor has the Lord chosen this one.' All right." Here, here's, what's here's what's happening. Other names are being called. Mm -hmm. yeah. It ain't yours. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Uh -huh. But a king knows, because I'm a king, right. my spot is secure. See, that's the difference between, between insecurity and security. Security yeah. says, yeah. it don't matter when you call my name. Yeah. Right. 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 Yeah. We've been in a season of graduations and uh, I always love graduation because my last name is B. So I, 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 every time I graduated, uh, I've been early on. Yeah. I've been early on, you know. So if I needed to go, five W's, X's, and Williams. Well, yeah. it's my last name. Oh. Trouble. So, who's cooking dinner? Uh, who's cooking dinner? I'm just going to invite Pastor over for dinner. <laughs> and, and, and here's, here, here, here's the thing. It, it didn't matter how long it took. I'm coming back for you, baby. It didn't matter how long it took to get to the W's. Uh -huh. <laughs> All right, so one time she took a little nap. Huh? She rested because she knew that her name was coming. Come on, yeah. See that? We good now? <laughs> I tried. His thing, as kings, you gotta know that your name is coming. Wow. That, that, that's what you gotta know. Don't, don't, don't be worried about how often somebody else's name is called. Listen, when 
when it's your time and when it's your season for your name to be called, listen, it don't matter who else, anybody else is say, you will hear your name. And that's what I love. There are hundreds, even thousands of people at some of these graduations and everybody's talking and everybody got, got other conversations going on. But when it comes to the person whose name it is to be announced, the person gets on and says, and next, Henry H. Baxter III. And you can hear that name above every name because when Look at verse 10 and 11. Listen, this is what I'm almost through. Stay on assignment uh, and watch this and watch God call you from among the sheep. All right, all right, all right. It's right there, all right. It's right there in the text. Um, uh, David was not sitting around waiting to be anointed, he, he didn't feel entitled to. To be king, he he was out in the field grinding. Uh, he was out there handling his his business, uh, and in fact, while he was out there, uh, a lion walked up on him, and he handled that lion like it wasn't nothing. Right, yeah. And a bear must not have gotten the message because a bear came up on him, and he handled that bear and ripped him apart too. And David wasn't even considered a shepherd; he was just watching the sheep. Right. Oh, you 
be king of your land, of your domain. Listen, nobody can be king of your castle like you can. Right. Nobody can be king husband, king daddy, right. king uncle, king godfather, king grandfather, right. king God. No, nobody can be you being king of the place and space that God has right. given you influence. Right. Right. It is your responsibility to be king of your castle. Right. Right. Nobody can take that away from you. Uh -huh. It is your responsibility alone. Look at verse 11 and 12. Mm -hmm. oh. Be a king, watch this, even if you're not treated like one. Mm -hmm. look, at, look, look at what happens. Uh, when, they, when they bring David in, I, I don't know what his response was, but, but imagine him coming in, seeing everybody standing around, saying like it. You was invited. You, you was invited. Come on. E even even the sixth brother was invited, mm -hmm. and I wasn't invited. Mm -hmm. Come on. Did they, did they did they not recognize who I was? Mm -hmm. well, what do you mean? Because I just read out the scripture in eighteen nineteen. He was he was well spoken. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. I hear people say that about us. Yeah. Oh, you're so well spoken. <laughs> Say something like, what would that mean? <laughs> what is you do me and mean about that? <laughs> Never mind. Uh, because he was well spoken, he was handsome, he had good features, he had good qualities about him. Why? You, you, you know what it was? Because even though he wasn't treated like a king, uh -huh. he saw the king in him. Yeah. Yeah. Right. He, when, when he looked in the mirror, he saw his own king-like tendencies. Uh -huh. And let me tell you something. When you see your own king-like tendencies, you don't care who treats you like a king. You don't care who talks to you like a king. Because when you look in the mirror, you see that you're a king. And you know that it's just a matter of time before your king responsibilities fall on you. I love how he did it uh, because they, they, they were in the presence but what they were going to do is they were going to have a banquet for the king and so when he said that everybody's going to remain standing he made them stay watch this mm -hmm. smelling all the food mm -hmm. right yeah. yes. right they had to sit back and stand and wait on David to come from the field. They had to wait on him to stop watching sheep. They had to wait That's on him. It. And so when he came in, he was dirty and, and smelly and stinky. And he was smelling like sheep. Uh, and, 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 and they had to wait and they had to stand while smelling mashed potatoes and yams and, and greens and some chicken. Uh, some more chicken. Baked right. chicken. Fried chicken. Barbecue. Barbecue chicken. chicken. Chicken, chicken. Pork chicken. I don't know if that's a turkey chicken. I eat turkey chicken. That's a good flavor. It's a better option. It's better. Somebody pray for me. Huh? Yeah. Because I'm saying some crazy stuff. Y'all be like, amen, the pastor. Turkey chicken. That's what we're going to pass out. Y'all get him some turkey chicken out the church. Huh? I love people who love their pastor. So, so here it is. He came, he came. They had to wait and stand for him to come in. Uh -huh. right. They couldn't sit down to eat until he got there. Mm -hmm. Isn't that amazing? He wasn't, he wasn't treated like the king. He, he wasn't talked to like he was a king. But when he saw himself, mm -hmm. he saw a king. Mm -hmm. and, and, and church, that's important. And let me tell you, because verse 13, verse 13 said, uh, so Samuel took the horn of oil, anointed him in the presence of his brothers, and from that day on, the Spirit of the Lord came powerfully upon David. It, it, isn't it amazing how in inopportune times, mm -hmm. God would do some amazing things. Mm -hmm. And so he had, he, all, all the other seven had walked underneath the horn because the oil, in verse 1, he said, pour the oil in your horn and, and tilt it. Because when, when, when the one walks by, the oil is going to pour on their head. He said, that's how you're going to know because they will be anointed. And so every day, I mean, some, they walk, and imagine this, they walk under with expectation. They walk under. Oh, wait. 
Right. Come on. Come on. Come on, Pastor. What you do? They, 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 they kept looking with expectation, but let me tell you something. Because they weren't the one. My God. Uh -huh. But when David came through with his dirty, stinky self, <laughs> and he, I'm sure he just kind of came like, what y'all looking at? Because when you're uh, when you're anointed to do it, nothing can stop the anointing from flowing in your life. And here's what he says: says the oil poured in front of his brothers. That, that's significant because I'm through. With that, but see, everybody's gonna know that you came. Yeah. Now, now here's the thing. You ain't got to fight to be king. You ain't got to fight for it. Because the anointing will flow in front of everybody and aid everybody will know. That you're the king. You have to fight for your right. All my life I had to fight. No. You don't have to fight to be king this time. This time the anointing will speak for you. This time the anointing will flow yeah, that's good. That's in good. such a way that's good. that it will blow even your mind. Uh -huh. that's good. The anointing will flow. And you will know, and everyone will know that you are king. Ladies and gentlemen, if you're here today, and maybe you're here without a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. That's some good news for you. The king is here. Oh, the king is here. And he's here to anoint you again. Because maybe, see, but the time in which David was anointed was in 1 Samuel chapter 16. But you know what David did? David, after he was anointed, they had dinner. You know what David did? Went right back to the field. I know that because a few verses later when he becomes Saul's intern, that's why I read verse 18 and 19, they had to, because they needed, Saul was having, was being tormented by a spirit that the Lord had allowed to torment him because he had been rejected and had been disobedient. And he said, listen, that my soul is being tormented. I, please get somebody that can come and sing and play spiritual songs so that when this torment comes on my life, that it doesn't have to stay. And so they said, well, I know this young cat named David. I mean, yeah, they just tend the sheep, but I, you know, I mean, he can come. He can play the liar and so when he comes and so he said well bring him here and he came in his presence and guess what they had to go get him back out in the, in the field with the sheep he had gone right back to what he knew understand something he knew that he had been anointed but his time hasn't come yet and he had to be patient listen listen there, there, there are higher kingly levels in us brothers but sometimes it ain't for right now Oh, you're the king of what you got right now, but be king right now. Because if you want God to expand your territory, you've got to show some king-like tendency. David was the king. He was anointed king in 1 Samuel chapter 16. He was not an appointed king until 2 Samuel chapter 5, 20 chapters later. For 20 chapters, he had to just fulfill and do his assignment. And God would just slowly, he was slowly but surely giving him just a little bit more responsibility. He said, like, eh, okay, take over this little area. Take this. But it wasn't until he was 30 years old that he took over all of, and became king of all of Israel. He had to wait 20 chapters. And let me tell you something. Sometimes the 20 chapters in life can be frustrating. Because we want it all now. But no, just do your assignment. Just be king where God has put you. Be king at your castle. Be king at your job. Be king as your uh, be king as supervisor. Be cool. Be king as director. Because uh, God will move you from an entry-level employee. He'll move you from freshman king to you'll be a senior king. He'll move you from a senior king to a college king. He'll move you from a college king to a supervisor king. He'll move from a supervisor king to an owner king. And you'll get your own branch, your own store, your own business. You won't just be, you'll be the head of your department. You'll be the principal of the school, 
the vice principal of school, he will slowly but surely elevate you at your level that you can handle. Listen, everybody can't handle kingship. So it's got to make you a king at the level at which you can handle. Sisters, I, 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 you're, you're a queen. I see how beautiful you queens are. But there's a level that will limit you by your ability to manage your queenship. He, 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 can't, he, can't, he can't put you in too high places when, when you will be ineffective. You're effective right here. And I know sometimes you want this, and that's great. And if you can have that achieved, strive for it, pull for it, pray for it, and God will elevate you. You may have to live out two chapters. You have to live just one chapter. You may have to just go four verses. You may have to go 20 chapters. But God will take you to the place. But be queen where you are right now. Be responsible where God has you right now. And God will take you to places that your mind can even imagine. Be king where you are. Be queen where you are. God's got you. And so what? Sometimes people have got to be rejected to make room for you to be king. Sometimes you got to go. Sometimes your supervisor got to be fired. And I know y'all was cool but still apply for the position. Somebody got to take it, but it may as well be you. You didn't fire him. Hmm? <laughs> he said, you may have got him fired. Maybe so. And I'm not talking about scheming. I'm saying maybe some, some people you know on your job who work above you don't need those positions. 